Hello again. This time we're going to do 8-man and draw a larger element. We're going to draw sodium. It's a little bit bigger. It's in group 1, period 3. And let's start. This time I want you to have your own periodic table. So go ahead and pause the video and get out your periodic table so you can find sodium. Group 1, period 3. Here we go. First thing I like to do is 8-man. A P E M A N. With this information, you can fill out um, now how many subatomic particles for sodium. So, sodium's atomic number is 11. I know that means it has 11 protons as well. Remember, these two A's are the same. All right, 11 protons. In eighth grade, we talk about stable atoms, so the number of protons and electrons always equal each other. One number, four pieces of information on this little acronym. Let's do the mass. The mass was like 22 decimal nine something. Remember, we round that mass number, so now we're just going to say it's 23. And this is just a little math problem. 23 minus 11. That's easy math. 12. All right, so let's draw it. I like to, before I do go too far, I like to make sure um, you have this information. It's going to help us later. Your group number is 1. Your period number is 3. This information can help you because it kind of provides some information for later. All right, so let's go and draw the Bohr model. I like to start with the nucleus. And I draw the nucleus as a square. Please don't assume that all models do this. Um, it just helps for me because it distinguishes it from the um, energy levels, which are usually circles. But sometimes they do draw the nucleus as like a little circle or a cluster of like little spheres that are different colors with symbols in them. Okay, so you got protons, you got neutrons. Let's list how many of each there are. So I know that there are 11 protons, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that. I know that there are 12 neutrons. Done. Now, I need to draw the electrons. But before I do that, I do want to point out this right here gives some information to you. One of the things that um, this does right here, this tells you how many ener energy levels it has. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the three rings, or I shouldn't say rings. I should call them energy levels. Okay, so you've got your three energy levels. Now we're going to start placing our electrons. Um, I do want you to remember, remember the rule, which is the energy levels in order to a eight. These are the, the capacity for electrons. So I know that in the first energy level, I can only fit two. But I need to draw 11, so now I'm down to nine. So I'm going to go ahead and place eight more out here. And I like drawing them as negative signs to remind you electrons are negative. So if you were to count how many uh, negative signs I've drawn so far on our model, you just count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I only, I've only drawn ten, but I need to draw eleven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw the eleventh one out here. And this guy is kind of special, so I might star him a little bit. Why is he so special? This right here, I can't be all that arrow, there we go, is a valence electron. And a valence electron tells you how reactive you are. The fact that this guy has only one valence electron means he's pretty reactive. All the elements in group 1 and 17 are the most reactive. Group 18, pretty stable because those are the noble gases. Um, but that's it. This is a larger element. Kind of gave you a little bit more of a trick on how to see um, the uh, how to draw it. And I'll, I do want to point one other thing out to you. This information right here kind of leads you to that information. The group number kind of tells you how many valence electrons you have. All right. Um, I think that's it right now. Um, you know what, before I do go on, I think I would like to explain to you guys the, how the group number works just for the first three periods. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off the screen. All right. 
So, let's practice. I just want you guys to see this because I didn't want to leave you with some confusing information. So, if I'm in group 13, uh, one of the things is valence electrons. That's what we're getting from this, valence electrons. So that you don't always have to draw the atom, you can do this. Um, here we go. If I'm in group 13, I have three valence electrons. If I'm in group 17, I have seven valence electrons. You start to see a trend here. Um, one of the things is there are the, those groups. If What if you're in group number two? Well, if you're in group number two, there is only one number there. So this right here is the number of valence electrons. So it's a little trick teaches you how to find the valence electrons without actually drawing it, but it only really works in the first three periods. I'll say that again. It only really works in the first three periods. So try to focus on uh, just those three periods when we do talk about this in the eighth grade. Hope you guys uh, really learned something from this video and you could use it. I'm going to attach it to your homework and I'm going to put it up on my website.